All right. It says that we are live. Hopefully, this thing is working. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, tell me if you can hear me. And Astronomy Live, let's get a mic check. Hey, thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Ah, uh, perfect, perfect. Okay, so it looks like uh, the live chat is a scrolling. Loud and clear, yes. Live and sound good. Hear you fine. All right, perfect. So yeah, pe people are uh, people are hearing us. Um, don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I guess we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Anyway, guys, uh, man. This uh, this stream is going to be very, very interesting because we're going to be talking about everything, literally everything, as in the entirety of the Flat Earth movement and what it has done for us over the years. Oh, boy. This is going to be done to us. I mean, listen. All I'm saying is that it, it, it has done things and things have been done and Flurfism has been, you know, interwoven within those things. You know what I'm saying? Oh, boy, do I know. <laughs> uh, well, and then other than that, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, tell you all right here, right now, that this is going to be the last hangout for a very, very, very long time. And the reason, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, is because uh, things are happening in my real life that I will not go into because uh, fuck that noise. But I will tell you this much. Um, it's all good things. All good things. But these are things that require my time and energy. And unfortunately, that means I have to take time and energy away from shit that doesn't matter, like flurfism. And, uh, you know reallocate that time to shit that's actually good and worth it and can actually put me in a much better position than I already am in the future. So uh, yeah, I am going on hiatus for an extended period of time. Um, I actually got a, uh, a question uh, on my last stream about how long I expect to be gone. Um, and I don't really have an exact time, but I would say at the very least, maybe, maybe about a year, I would say about a year I'll be gone. And the reason is because, like I said, there, there's a lot of things happening and throughout the next year, um, I'm going to be tackling multiple projects at the exact same time. And these multiple projects require my full undivided attention and the one thing i realized when arguing against flat earthers on the internet is that in order to do a quality job at arguing with flat earthers on the internet you have to do the research that they are not willing to do and that takes time you also have to go out and get the data that they're not willing to collect uh, Astronomy Live will be the first to tell you that our last video about measuring the distance to the sun, uh, it was a pain in the ass. And the reason why it was a pain in the ass is because we were doing the work that Flat Earthers, again, didn't want to do. And there's a reason why they don't want to do it because, you know, it's effort. And it actually requires this thing called math. And as we all are well aware, I'm sure, uh, math is flat earth or kryptonite. So while it is very fulfilling to have a video posted that without any issues whatsoever completely debunks the flat earth bullshit story, the amount of work it takes to get to that point is I, it, it's, it's no longer worth it given the stuff that I'm now having to deal with in my real life. And like I said, all good things, but it is going to require that my time be reallocated to these other projects. And so I do want to say that I will be back. This is not the end. I, I will be back making videos. Once again, there, there's more projects that I still want to do in the future, but they, they're going to have to be placed on the back burner for now. And so with that, I just want to say thank you guys for sticking with me uh, over the years. But all is not not lost because we still have Astronomy Live 
who will be uh, continuing to kick ass and take names. Isn't that right? Absolutely. And you reminded me of something, and I, I've forgotten the term for it. Isn't there a term for the fact that it takes exponentially longer to debunk something than it is to simply spew out nonsense? There's there's it's, a term it's for called that. A, it's a law. It's called Brandolini's Law. There it is. There it is. That's the term I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. No, exactly what you described. And uh, that's all fine and everything. And, and I think we have a lot of fun uh, doing things like measuring the distance to the sun. But it is considerable effort as you said and and requires a lot of time see unlike flat earthers flat earther can come on here any given day uh say i don't know any given friday and just start spewing nonsense and it takes no preparation takes no effort what we do actually takes preparation effort and careful attention to detail and that requires a lot of time so i totally understand if you've got you know a lot of stuff going on in your life, then it's not exactly easy to maintain a consistent upload schedule uh, when you actually have to pay attention to the details, and that's what we like to do. We um, we have we have a certain standard that we don't want to fall below, and one thing that I realized, especially when we were making our last video, is that that standard just kept getting higher and higher and higher as we were making the video. It, it, did, did you notice that that as well or was that just me no i definitely did i mean it started out in my head as most of the project was going to be about just getting the parallax measurement of mars and i knew how to do that and that was pretty straightforward but you had this whole other thing where you wanted to validate kepler's third law and i knew that was going to be a part of it but that became a large part of it that became uh kind of its own effort to be able to accurately measure uh, the velocities, the altitudes of a couple different satellites that were much higher than ISS. And the precision required to hit our, our threshold of quality, the, what we were going for, uh, required much more attention to detail and honestly took even more time than just the measurement of Mars itself. Yep. And then you have to think, think to yourself that we had to make this video in such a way that it was to the best of our ability uh we had to make it easy to understand one thing had to lead to the other and so you don't just have the issue with collecting the data and doing it in such a way that the data is actually of quality and resolution that becomes usable but you also have to put it together in such a way and explain it to the audience in such a way that it becomes easy ish to follow because you know truth be told this is a very complicated subject um which is why i don't ex I, I don't expect you know everybody to get up and do this it's it's out of the capability of a lot of people out there but i want it to be uh, you know understandable to individuals who may not have the equipment that we had access to so that they could easily follow along and in order to do that we had to make it easy to follow along while still cutting out a lot of, I'm going to call it fluff, even though it really wasn't fluff. There was a lot of good information that we cut out, which we would then have to, you know, redo with supplemental stuff because, you know, it's, it, it's, there's so many different ways that you can describe our methodology. You, and mean, you mean the half hour of extra stuff that I recorded that, Exactly. Yeah, there's a there's literally a half hour of extra stuff that we could have put into the video, but it would have made the video too long in that case. And figuring out what can be cut and what shouldn't be cut is a process on its own. You know, and this and this shows just how much work it takes to make a video that's actually worth a damn. And then you compare it to what Flat Earthers put on the internet, and it's literally stuff that they squeezed out of their backside in five seconds. The, again, the amount of effort it takes to debunk nonsense on the internet, especially Flat Earth nonsense, is an order of magnitude more than what it takes to initially produce it. That's Brandolini's Law. And so I was looking at our, our last video and just the amount of work it took to... Uh, to get that video uploaded, uh, uploaded and uh, you know edited, rendered, uploaded the whole script, everything, basically the entire process. I I was looking back over what we did to make this video a thing, and it was a lot of work. 
And then I thought to myself, I'm not going to have time to do this kind of stuff, especially when you consider all the stuff that I have coming up. And like I said, the stuff that I have coming up is going to be real life stuff, stuff that has to take priority. Even though I don't want to go on hiatus, I feel as though it's necessary because of how much effort I want to put into making flat earth debunking videos because I don't want to put out subpar shit. I want to make sure that whatever data, whatever information I put out there, it's accurate. And if I find myself spending too much time on this, I may find myself taking time away from projects that actually have an impact on my real life. And I, I just can't take that risk. And so with that, I will be going on hiatus. It will probably be for a year because like I said, there's multiple projects going on at the exact same time. And in order for me to accomplish the goals that I've set for myself, it's at the very least going to take a year. So that's my timeline. It's not set in stone. It could be sooner. It could be later. Who knows? So uh, don't get mad at me if it's four years from now and I still haven't shown back up. Um, maybe something else has come up or maybe I'm just enjoying the peace and quiet. Who knows? But yeah, no promises. But for now, I'm aiming for a year. And after that, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the update on the hiatus part of it. But now we're going to go over the flat earth side of everything. And by everything, I mean from the moment we started to where we are now, what have we learned? What have we accomplished? All that jazz. And so, Astronomy Live, let me ask you a question. Do you remember that one day in Titusville where your life immediately became a lot more interesting? When I walked up to you and I was like, hey, I just want you to know the moon is a hologram. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, and you remember that at that, that point, that was the first day of the rest of your life? <laughs> I, I I didn't imagine... Um, I didn't imagine that the, the, the direction of my content would change in the ways that it did. Mm, yes, but we also have to keep, keep in mind one thing, that your life instantly became like a bajillion times more awesome... Because you have gotten to know me, right? Right. This is true. This is right? true. No, I, I honestly, in all seriousness, no, I'm really glad to have made friends with you and, and had the chance to do all these cool adventures with you. I mean, I, I, I'm very thankful for that. So uh, I, I do have the Flat Earthers to thank for that, I guess. Though really, if you recall, like my interest was purely selfish. I wanted to meet you because you had better footage than I did. That's why I wanted to meet you. Mm, I appreciate that. And and I just want to say it was a pleasure meeting you. And I have to say that if you were to get smacked by a semi truck and and get turned into, you know, the most awesome puff of pink mist one could ever possibly imagine, I would probably cry for you for a whole 10 minutes. <laughs> well, I'm. I guess I'm glad to know that. I tell you what. <laughs> Followed by me ho hooking up a U-Haul to your stuff and uh, and dragging out your telescopes. <laughs> uh, no, in all seriousness, it's a, it's it's awesome. It's it's absolutely awesome. And um, uh, I have to thank you for helping me out with all of these uh, crazy fucking ideas that, that that I've had. You know, me calling you back in 2018, if I remember, I called you at 2018, two o'clock in the morning. I'm like, hey, yo be in venice we're going to measure the altitude of the international space station and you you crazy motherfucker you actually did it <laughs> oh yeah oh i remember oh god i remember dragging my butt out of bed that morning um, yep and then and then what was great is that he had to work the next day oh gosh <laughs> i mean yeah that's that's frequently the case i mean i I just I just recently uh, went out for uh, the Friday morning launch attempt of Crew Seven, so I drove uh, from one side of the state to the other, stayed with my folks over in Titusville overnight, woke up in the middle of the night only to find out they had already canceled the launch, so went back to sleep for a little bit, but then had to get up and go all the way back across the state to go to work that day, 
yeah, by the end of that, I was dead, which is why I uh, decided not to make a uh, sleepy headed drive back across the state again. So therefore, I missed the launch, unfortunately. Mm, that sounds like quitter talk to me. It sounds like I didn't want to get smacked by a Mack truck and turned into a fine pink mist to me. Ah, man. Look at that. We came for a uh, full circle on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and start from the very beginning. Um, as we all know, unfortunately, there is a guy out there by name of Jaronism, and he started out by coming into a random uh, hangout that I was in back when hangouts were a thing. He came in under an, an account called JC Camby that had a, a baseball bobblehead figure as the avatar. It's kind of weird, but he was very, very... um hesitant to call himself a flat earther until finally i just came out and asked them and i'm like hey yo quick question do you do, do you think the earth is flat and this this motherfucker probably shat a brick when i asked him that because he didn't think he would get called out so so quickly but uh that was the start of jaronism because we got into a bit of a pissing contest i gotta find that hangout but it's probably it's probably long gone by now but I got to find that hangout shit. But um, he, uh, we, we, we made a bet with each other, and that bet was, uh, or I, I guess we made a deal, not really a bet, but a deal. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to make a YouTube channel, and it's going to be dedicated to proving flat earth. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to make a YouTube channel, and I'm going to be uh, dedicating my time to debunking your sorry ass. And the rest is history. Yeah. That so happens. we have you to thank. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he was he he was my creation, unfortunately. No, well, I'm who was it? I remember not that long ago, uh, getting into a discussion with someone who was convinced that he was actually a a paid shill or a plant or a, a basically a, a um, well, I don't know, a double agent for you. Like you had set him out there to pretend to be a flat earther but he secretly works for you or something well the only reason that they were saying that shit is because they're embarrassed by him they're embarrassed by the shit that he says and i'll go ahead and give you an example and i actually have a fucking list of shit that he said so let me get this up so um and astronomy live i want to see your uh, real-time reaction to this so one of the first um proofs that he gave up on his youtube channel this was back when he only had like four thousand subscribers i think so he posted a video saying that he has proof that rockets do not go to space and his proof was that the shortest uh, the shortest path between two points is a line but do rockets launch straight up when they go to space absolutely not he says he says that they roll over and uh, and and go sideways and then he says that the only reason they do this is to just get out of your field of view so that you can't see them landing elsewhere or crashing into the ocean and then he challenged people and and this is the thing he challenged people to come up with an explanation for why rockets curve when going to space that was one of his first if not the first video he ever posted about why space is fake according to him good grief and we're still dealing with that claim all these years later like they haven't learned anything even though it is fully explained and in fact artemis one you were there too we launched we watched it launch i stuck around and then one orbit later about two hours later it came back around just after the tli burn and i saw it re-emerge from earth's shadow over the launch pad that it had just launched from one orbit later. So obviously it didn't crash. Yeah. By, by the way, guys, a trans lunar injection. Just, yes. Just oh, throw, did I throw that out there because people gloss over the term. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Trans lunar injection. So, so anyway, um, we, uh, we went ahead and had a spat back and forth about this going to orbit thing. And this dude simply would not learn. He would not admit that he was wrong about, you know, going to space and how you do have to curve the rocket to go into space because you want to get into orbit. You can't just launch straight up and magically stay in the fucking sky. That's not how this shit works. So in order to go to space and then to stay in space, 
you have to get into orbit. And the way you get into orbit is that you eventually have to start running along the Earth's surface. Like, this isn't a difficult concept to understand, but what was interesting about this is that as you went on and on and on throughout the years, you noticed that even though Jaronism has never corrected himself on this, he has never, he or not, not ever, but he hasn't as of late, as of recently, he hasn't brought that up again as an as an argument. He, he I think he I think he realized just how fucking stupid he sounds. And he has not corrected himself, but has made a promise to himself to not repeat that claim in the future. And that's basically what, what we always get from Flat Earthers is that they won't admit that they fucked up. They'll just quietly acknowledge it to themselves and just never make the claim again. And then they're hoping that people will forget that they ever made the claim in the first place. But no. I'm reminding people right now, Jaronism, you claimed that the reason you believed or the reason why you knew that space was fake is because rockets didn't launch straight up to get into space because the shortest path between two points is a line. Yeah, that's it. I didn't realize he, he really didn't uh, make that claim anymore. Obviously, others still do and others still still do i mean yeah and that's and that's the that's the issue is that when you don't correct yourself when you don't come out and say hey guys uh as a flat earther i want to acknowledge that this is a stupid fucking argument and here's why you end up doing a disservice to your fellow flirts and i think this is another reason why a lot of flat earthers don't want to have anything to do with the guy anymore uh because he is uh he's kind of an embarrassment to them and if you are the type of flirt to embarrass other flat earthers, dude, that bar is so low it's underground. We're we're not we're not talking about scraping the bottom of the barrel. You know, everyone at this point has splinters and they dug through the bottom of the barrel, through the concrete and rebar, through the underground plumbing, through the sewer system. They're on their way to the core of the earth as we speak. Well, this is the thing. I think that not to get too far ahead of the subject here, but the state of flat earth is such that the only ones who seem to be able to keep good camaraderie with the others and keep this sense of community going have to stick to very superficial memes. It's all memes all the time. They avoid any in-depth discussions because then these problems with their claims immediately start to come out and it doesn't stand up to any degree of scrutiny. And so you have people like Jaronism who were, you know, completely trashed in the debate with you, uh, who were made to look uh, like fools in, in that uh, Behind the Curve documentary. And, you know, Bob Nodell, rest in peace, he also looked, frankly, dishonest and withholding data that contra contradicted his beliefs. Um, we so all We all remember the 15 degree per hour drift. Do not talk about the 15 degree per hour drift. And then them saying in that documentary, in that documentary, that oh, we're going to fix that by putting it in a what was it, a crystalline box or sphere or whatever to block it from the heavenly energies, whatever <laughs> right. the fuck that means. Right, right. I mean, at that point, I guess you might as well just submerge it underwater till it stops working because that will certainly block it from the energies in the most mm -hmm. literal way possible. <laughs> but, but. Yeah, this is the thing. Like any in-depth analysis, if they actually do the work that, that we've done, for example, you quickly start to realize that actually they're completely wrong about everything. You know, these these vehicles that go into space, guess what? They're really going into space. And yep. and I'll give you an, a recent example. The Chandrayaan, Chandrayaan 3 mission. Oh, yeah. I knew that was going to cause major, major butt hurt. And guess what? I was right to the surprise of nobody to the surprise of no one. And, and what I've noticed is that the ones who I will say are socially clever will avoid any in-depth of discussion and keep it very superficial. Like I said, and only communicate in terms of memes, pretty much they'll take the telemetry driven animations that were shown in mission control and they'll attach those to memes and say look haha look how fake it looks look how fake it looks when no one claimed that was the real footage 
it all starts on the basis of a lie. They know no one is actually posting this as if it's supposed to be the real footage, but they're hoping they can trick their audience into believing that's how it was originally presented because of how they are now presenting it themselves as if it had been presented that way. Yep. And the moment anyone says that's not the real footage, no one said that it was, and you know, here's the real photos. They just ignore that. And it's just meme, meme, meme. Just push the meme button over again. Yeah. And, they, 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 and, I'll, and I'll also hint back to a time where you and I had, had to deal with that directly. If we remember when Sacred was on this channel, uh, we were talking about the Artemis launch. And he brought up the fact that Artemis, when you were watching the live stream for Artemis, that it cut to a view that was the telemetry view uh, similar to what India was showing. Well, on that telemetry view, it is low resolution, looks like a video game, blah, blah, blah. We already know this, but um, there was a moment where that telemetry view showed the launch escape tower uh, being jettisoned off. And that wasn't shown live. That There wasn't a real clip of that in real time. Um, there was after the fact, but it wasn't in real time. It was just shown on the telemetry view. And the question became, how can we trust this telemetry view? And you actually pointed out in my own footage, which I didn't even realize I captured at the time, you point out that in my own footage and in your footage as well, we independently confirmed the jettison of the launch escape tower. We yep. independently confirmed that showing that the telemetry view was correct it yes. represented reality now again it's not going to represent reality in terms of 4k resolution and you know yes it does look like a video game but what it represents as what is happening did actually happen right it's telemetry driven animation i mean the the good ones are they're, they're basically taking the telemetry data from the vehicle and feeding that into a simulator kind of like orbiter space space flight simulator but maybe even simpler than that in that um it's not it's not it's really not a video game it's not like you can take a joystick and manually steer this it's it's being driven purely by the telemetry purely by the numbers that tell you where the vehicle is where it's pointing and how fast it's accelerating and you feed that into a simulation that shows you a render of uh, depicting where the rocket is and what it's doing like it makes it makes it easier to follow the sequence of events exactly and so as you said like we captured the actual launch escape tower jettisoning uh as they showed it in the telemetry driven animation and um one orbit later when it came back around and i caught it uh in my time lapse of it going overhead back over the launch pad one orbit after launch after they did the uh, translunar injection burn, what you can see in the telemetry driven animation that was in the live stream was that the sun had just peaked over the horizon as you could see Florida directly below it. You could see Florida below the vehicle. You could see the outline of Florida in the, in the night lights in the, in the render that they had. And you could see the sun just peeking over the horizon. Well, what did I see? I literally caught it coming out of Earth's shadow. It appeared out of nowhere in the sky because it was emerging from Earth's shadow. So once again, I had independent confirmation that what was being shown in that animation is what was actually happening in real life. And that's what I was capturing, the real mm -hmm. life situation. Again, this is these are these are animations powered by actual data. So when when, when people bring up that, oh, they're claiming that that this is that this is a uh, real, well, it's real in the sense that the animation, which no one denies that it is an animation. But what we're saying is that the animation is powered by actual events that are occurring. And just like you said, Astronomy Life, it always starts with, you know, ignoring that bit of information that shows them to be dumbasses and that anyone who creates such a meme is, you know, kind of a dumbass. Well, and, and this is the thing. I don't think, well, obviously it doesn't have any real intellectual weight behind it. But what I've, what I've gleaned over the past few weeks is that that doesn't matter. What matters to them and, and what matters in terms of the growth or shrinkage of the movement is purely the social aspects of it and the social attractiveness of it. And so what I mean by that... There's social attractiveness of being wrong on the internet. Well, it's the sense of community. 
It's the sense of belonging. It's a sense of, I am a, I'm an outcast. Okay, they come to the situation like this. I'm an outcast. I'm a reject. I have no friends. My prospects in life are not looking so good. But this community over here is accepting of people. And they're telling me that it's not my fault, that it's my teachers, it's my professors, if I made it that far, it's, it's my boss, it's everyone else who's lying to me. The world itself is a lie. My education was a lie. So I don't need to feel so bad about having bad grades when I was in school, because that was all just indoctrination. And Earth is actually flat, uh, et cetera. And so- and if, they, and if they have to prop that up by purposefully misrepresenting information, then so be it. Right, but I'm talking about the new believer, okay? The quote-unquote prototypical new believer approaching the situation who looks at it and maybe starts to follow someone like a, I'll just, I'm just going to use as an example, the Bill and Ted guys, okay? Like they're growing right now on Twitter. And the reason that happens, I believe, is because of that sense of community. It's not about evidence. It's not about um scientific proof or, or evidence or anything like that. And it's not about intellectual weight behind the memes. It's about the sense of belonging and the sense that you can ridicule the people who are objectively more educated, um, have actually done their homework and all this, that you feel have looked down on you your whole life. And so there's a sense of, I get to not only rebel, but I'm actually better than they are. I've got the secret special knowledge now that I've been taught by Bill and Ted and the others. And look at these memes. Look at how they're ridiculing these people. This is great. I want to join in on this. It's like a pack of hyenas. Yep, so exactly. The, the evidence and, and you know, doesn't even matter. That, that particular grift, that particular grift does not care about the truth. It, it, it never will care about the truth. That particular grift, which, by the way, we we'll also... Uh, get a added boost once you pay Elon Musk eight fucking dollars, which both of them had, I believe, at this point. <laughs> you know, so oh yeah, they do. And, and they, they, that's they. like that's like hooking up nitrous to the grift. You know, fucking boom, bitch. We're we're getting the fuck out of here. We're we're going to the moon, metaphorically speaking, because according to them, the moon isn't real or a hologram or too small or whatever. Um, but anyway, the grift relies on that sense of community and if they need to lie in order to maintain that community then so be it and that's why they're making memes saying that oh india's claiming this is real footage no they're fucking not that is that is a telemetry view you dumb fuck right and they do this with with everything any kind of promotional photo any kind of promotional render i actually had a guy i think it was yesterday say to me that who would ever do this? They, he literally said that no one, no one would ever make a fake CGI render if it's a real thing. Are you kidding me? And they, so they, I linked. They made, I think you they, saw it. I, I linked to the promotional render of Falcon Heavy that was. Yeah, I, re I remember that. Uh, there was a promotional render of Falcon Heavy. There was a promotional render of different versions of Falcon Nine before Falcon Nine became what it is today. There was even promotional renders about a reusable second stage that still yeah. hasn't been a thing about uh, with Falcon 9. There's promotional renders of Rocket Lab's uh, new uh, new Electron. vehicle called yeah. called a what's it called Neutron. Oh, Neutron. Yeah, I get it confused with Electron. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. So, so Neutron. They have a promotional render of Neutron before Neutron is a real thing. And uh, by the way, there was even promotional renders of future aircraft that Boeing are making, that Airbus is making. Um, and the thing is, is that there was even a promotional render of the new Nissan uh, Z vehicle before it was even built, before it was ever on the market. Oh, yeah. So this is not a new thing, and flat earthers need to understand this, and I bet that a lot of them do understand this. They just don't care. Right, right. They see it as an opportunity. It's They're laughing all the way to the bank because for them, it doesn't matter what the truth of the matter is. The fact that they can just take it and say, look, 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 they posted a fake CGI thing. That's all they care about. Mm -hmm. That's all they care about. They would actually be devastated if – there was no content except that which came directly from the cameras on the spacecraft. Like that would be devastating for them, but it would also be annoying, pointlessly annoying because 
all you would see on the screen, if anything, would be numbers until the thing lands. And that's not going to communicate information to anyone. So exactly. obviously that's not how anyone's going to do things in reality. But that's this, not this is why you it's, spent it's, it's an if I ran the zoo fallacy. So much, uh, if I can just say, this is why you spent so much time making those blender animations. Oh yeah, yeah. This was yeah. This was a, a huge part of that that uh, video measuring the distance of the sun and the, and the follow on supplemental as well. And and it's a powerful tool because it can it can help you convey that kind of visual information. And so I'm really glad that I'm I'm getting the chance to to learn Blender here and, and be able to adapt it for future videos. But it, it takes it's another reason why these videos take a lot of time and effort, right? But um, it helps convey that visual information because if all I'm doing is throwing numbers at you and equations all day long, it's really hard to, to absorb that information, isn't it? Yeah, and and this is why, you know, the effort is put forward to make these real-time animations because they're trying to convey what's actually happening where you don't have to actually at all. You don't have to do the math yourself. It's showing, it's doing all the computations and showing you what it would look like if you were there, albeit low res version of it, but it's showing you what's happening in real time, but they're not saying that that is an actual camera following the craft all the way down to the surface of the moon. No one's making that claim. And, and the thing that, um, whose was it? It was Stu Peters. That's who it was. So Stu Peters tweeted this out too, saying that India faked the moon landing and, you know, he had that clip of the of the uh, telemetry driven animation again. So <laughs> I left him a community note, uh, which is a wonderful feature. And I think this is this is where I'm going to focus, honestly, most of my debunking efforts going forward, because it's it's short, pithy to the point. You just provide a few links and it gets more reach than my YouTube channel ever could. That I did see that note, community note. That was that was excellent. That community note has had over 100,000 views, dude. Like that, that that's my awesome. videos would never get that kind of reach. And it automatically comes anytime that Stu Peters tweet gets reposted. Anytime a every it, time it, it gets it gets reposted, the debunk of that tweet literally follows it. I love that shit so much. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, and the, so the thing that these guys all ignore, and, and it's been interesting to see the response. The thing they all ignore is the fact that tons of amateurs have been listening to this probe with their radio, their homebrew radio telescopes. They've got dishes, you know, like back in the day before direct TV, the big satellite TV dishes that you used to see on people's houses. Some people repurpose these things or they have other similar size dishes that they build for their own personal radio observatory. Like it's amazing. And so Scott Tilley, he's, he's a well-known one who's been doing this and there's been others like him who've been listening to this probe on its way to the moon. And now on the lunar surface and he can tell based on the doppler shift over time just how fast the moon's moving because the probe is just sitting there stationary on the moon and so um he's been tracking this from day one basically and now he's picking it up on the moon and he'll do live streams for hours where you can hear the beep 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 beep, beep the little beeps coming from this probe and from the ground stations that are communicating with it that are broadcasting to it so powerfully that he can actually hear those commands being issued to the probe reflecting off the freaking moon and coming back to him. So he's hearing the two-way communication to this probe confirming that I don't care what you think. Like, sure, yes, the animation's not real. It's just a depiction of what was happening. But we know that's what happened because we can literally hear the radio signal coming from the moon. And their response to this is hilarious to me. Like, all the, the, the one response I've seen from... Um, flat earthers who actually bother to respond to the debunk is like, oh, it lines on a graph. Thanks. Now I totally believe. Like to them, it's so, again, it's so superficial. It's memes and pictures. And if it's not communicated in the format of an image, they don't get it. Like they don't yep. get that. Not, not only do they not get it, they don't want to get it because to get it would be to immediately, you know, relinquish their belief that the yep. earth is flat that space is fake that all the you know space agencies are out to get them exactly exactly yeah they don't want to get it and and that doesn't terribly surprise me but i my hope is that it helps others from falling into that rabbit hole i don't think it's going to convert them overnight nor would i expect it to but it does make it damn inconvenient for them now when they retweet that post because at, at the first, it's it's just the superficial, oh, yeah, that's obviously fake. Huh, they must have faked it. But now 
any reasonable person looking at it, the next thing they see is all these links to all these amateurs who've been recording the radio signals from it. And that makes you stop and think, oh, well, sure, even if that picture's fake, there's obviously something there on the moon. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, you've just planted the seed of science. Congratulations. And I love the fact that the debunk is going to be following that that tweet yes. everywhere it goes. And, and yes. you know what? Good, good. <laughs> it, it, it should. It should. Um, but um, to kind of uh, illustrate this point, let me go ahead and give you all a blast from the past of why I believe uh, this is happening as it is right now. Why do uh, – because here's the thing. Flat Earthers at one point in time, and this was a very long time ago – actually tried to do some work. And I will give Jaronism some credit, only some, very little. He did actually try to do some work. He did try to find inconsistencies on his own. He didn't follow memes on Twitter. He didn't follow anyone else. He literally went out and did his, dare I call it research, did his own research to find what he believed were gotchas. That's not the case anymore. If you were to go on Twitter, it's not about, you know, finding so-called gotchas on your own. It's not about doing your own research. So I guess the hashtag is dead now, guys, because it's not about doing your own research anymore. It's simply about perpetuating the bullshit story through memes and nothing else and it's it's that that is actually the current state of flurf but let me get, give you uh, guys an example of where jaronism came from and i think this is why he stopped trying to do his own research and just decided to spew the same bullshit that other flat earthers have been spewing um he posted a video which has since been deleted gee i wonder why um, where he was uh, asking people a certain question. And he's, and so Astronomy Live, I'm going to ask you a, uh, a question that Jaronism asked the audience. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, the question is this. When watching a basketball game, have you ever seen the basketball players become slightly transparent where you could see right through them to the court that they were standing on? No. Okay. Therefore, space is fake. What? Yeah. Where he was going with that, I was curious. And so I watched the video just to see what the fuck he was actually talking about. And what he was talking about is that you could actually see stars in the, uh, in the video that was shot from the International Space Station. And at one point the camera drifts off so that it captures more of the earth than it does the blackness of space. The sun disappears behind the earth. So you can see that, that glowing uh, edge from the sun that had just set at that point in time. And you could see stars where the earth was. So, okay, which one is this? Is this where it's hot pixels or is this where it's fishing vessels? Uh, no, no, you, you got it right the first time. It was hot pixels. Okay, I should have known. Yeah, so this guy, I mean, and, and that's the thing. We've been dealing with this shit for so long. We immediately know what the fucking answer is. It's, it's, it's comical. This, this demonstrates just how much fucking time we spent on this shit. But basically, Jaronism made this entire video building up building up building up while also putting sprinkling in a lot of bitching to just in my opinion make the video longer and then he gets to the point the point was is that he could see stars quote unquote stars where the earth is are you telling me i should be able to see through the earth to the stars that are behind them and uh, we're like no but what we are telling you is that th that those aren't stars those are hot pixels. This was the first time Jaronism ever heard of such a concept. This is the first time Jaronism became aware that when you bring cameras to space, 
they immediately start to get damaged. And the reason is because of, what was it, cosmic rays and particles and cosmic shit? Cosmic radiation, yeah, cosmic, yeah, cosmic strokes, radiation. That which you, you get on the Earth as too, but not as intensely. Well, we have our, you know, mag, you know, atmosphere. Atmosphere. And, I mean, we ISS is mostly under the magnetic field too, but it's not under the atmosphere, which is why uh, even airline pilots uh, are exposed to more radiation than the rest of us sitting on the surface because they are basically above a lot of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So when I made this video, I was like, listen, you know, down here on Earth, cameras and camera sensors in particular will have a much longer life. And the reason is because we are protected by the atmosphere. When you bring those prosumer grade cameras to space, the sensors start to get damaged. And with sensors, the damage is permanent. So it will still produce an image. You can still see what's going on in the video, but you're you're going to see a, a white dot here, a white dot there, a white dot here, a white dot there. And Jaronism, not wanting to do any more research than, oh, well, I see dots on a screen, hurt the dirt, decided to make the claim that those were stars and that the image fakers were so incompetent that they forgot to remove the star layer from the video. Yeah, yeah. Um, that actually happened. You know, the funny thing is you could run those images through a site like astrometry.net, and guess what's not going to happen? It's not going to find a solution because it won't match any known pattern of stars. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> could it be because, now this is just a theory of mine, but could it be that it's, not stars right right and anytime and I'll, I'll go ahead and plug my own live stream i'm planning by the way guys to do a live stream tonight if the weather is good it's looking good right now uh tonight saturn is going to be closer to earth than any other day or any other night for the rest of the year so we're going to take a look at that later tonight but when i do my live streams uh when i do my deep space live streams in particular and i get the deep space camera going and pointed at say a galaxy What's the first picture always show? And I always talk about this. You see a bunch of hot pixels. You see red, green, and blue solid pixels, individual pixels all over the image, all over the galaxy, all over the actual pictures of the stars. And you can tell that they are hot pixels for a couple reasons. One, their color tends to be very intense because it's a single pixel defect and the single pixel was either set for red, green, or blue. And number two, they don't have what we call a point spread function. Actual stars, actual light coming into any given optic is not going to fall onto just a single pixel. It will spread out, gradually decrease in brightness over a radius of a few pixels. And so you get what we call a point spread function that you can see it's actually a little bit soft. No matter how sharp it is, you're going to have some degree of diffraction in the optics and it will spread out onto the sensor over multiple pixels. And that indicates to you that actually it's a real source of light not just a hot pixel. And so you will get hot pixels. And even if you don't have hot pixels, you'll still occasionally get cosmic ray strikes where radiation will cause the um, sensor pixels to experience a charge. And again, you'll see individual red, green, and blue pixels light up in response to that. So what do I do? Well, after I take a picture of the galaxy with all the hot pixels, the camera automatically closes its shutter and it takes an exposure that's just as long as the regular pictures, usually about five minutes. And then it opens the shutter back up and subtracts that picture from all future pictures so that we eliminate just the pic just the pixels that were lit up with the shutter closed. If you take a picture with the shutter closed, you shouldn't be seeing anything, right? It should be perfectly black. Try it sometime. If you do, if you have an SLR camera, some sort of camera that you can do a really long exposure in, close the shutter completely, co cover the lens with a, a hard plastic and take a picture for like five minutes. And then when you get done, you will see pixels lit up all over the sensor. Those are hot pixels, just effective pixels. And if you take picture after picture, guess what? The hot pixels pretty much won't change. The only thing that's gonna change in those pictures are the cosmic ray strikes, the bits of radiation that hit the pic hit the sensor, despite the fact that you had the shutter, uh, you know, you had the lens closed. So try that sometime, but that's what was happening in that, in that ISS footage. 
Excelente. And so with that being said, I am now going to move on to the second uh, thing that I wanted to bring up, which comes from the uh, from from the site formerly known as Twitter, because I guess, I don't know, is it, it are we going to still call it Twitter or I'm, I'm going to call it, it X? Yeah. I'm sorry, X is stupid. No, it really is stupid. I don't know why he did that. I mean, can you he's imagine he's been brain obsessed recognition with X like that and years. just throwing it away? Yeah, I mean, he's been obsessed with the letter X for years since long before SpaceX. He's he's you know PayPal was going to be X dot com right. So this is going way way back, but uh, he's finally got his own website now called Twitter, and he's turning it into X. So there you go. I, I think I think he's trying to. I think he's actually trying to make a uh, a competitor to PayPal now using Twitter. Or really? X. Yeah, because he's trying to make it the "quote unquote" everything app, including payments. Oh, oh, that's gonna be real awkward between him and Jared Isaacman, isn't it? Oh yeah, it's it's gonna be a shit show, and I can't wait for it. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. By the way, I was uh I was in the mall today. I, I hit up Fye. I actually saw they're they're using a Shift Four payments. That's the first time I've actually seen someone using Shift Four in a you know uh, retail setting. But thought that was interesting. Side note. But uh, yeah, Jared Isaacman is supposed to be going up again, buying another flight from uh, SpaceX with uh, uh, the Polaris Dawn mission. So that'll be cool to see. That works. Uh, but anyway, going back to it um with uh but on, from the site formerly known as twitter now called x which is absolutely stupid as shit um we were having a bit of a spat with one guy about what you was uh pointing out in your supplement video about zenith versus flat earth plane and uh flat you know coordinate system or flat earth coordinate system or something like that and basically where I'm going with this is I'm trying to I'm trying to explain the best way I can, but it's so fucking dumb. It's really hard sometimes. But basically, guys, what flat earthers are now resorting to is that they're trying to make the claim that everything, including math, science, physics, you name it, is based on flat earth. And so we had uh, brought up a coordinate system, a 3D coordinate system in one of our previous videos about measuring the distance of the sun. Astronomy Live made a, uh, a point uh, to show that this is the coordinate system that we are using to figure out the velocity of a satellite so we could figure out um, if Kepler's third law was legit. Now flat earthers are literally trying to do what I can only describe as stolen valor at this point, where they're trying to claim that a coordinate system, a three-dimensional coordinate system, that will be more than happy to occupy any three-dimensional shape within it, is a quote-unquote flat earth coordinate system. I had to beat this motherfucker into submission, and it took weeks of posting the same shit over and over and over again before he finally gave up. And and it was based on the fact that a 3D coordinate system is not a flat Earth coordinate system. A 3D coordinate system is more than happy to accept any shape within it. And you can assign points in three-dimensional space with those shapes and make measurements. So yeah, but that's that's where we're that's where we're at right now in terms of flat in terms of flat earth where if you post any evidence they're going to try one of three tactics one they're going to try and meme you to death two they're going to try and take a uh, credit for for your work by saying it's flat earth math or a flat earth coordinate system or some crazy shit like that or and this is my favorite number three they'll start accusing you of being a pedophile oh god yeah yeah tm uh, had some fun with that, didn't he? Just mm -hmm. out of nowhere. Oh yeah, yeah, he did. And and this is this is where, where where we're at. Where you know, flat earthers have hit a level of dishonesty that not only is it not worth my time to engage to engage these fools, but it's literally becoming boring at this point. Like I, I expected that there was going to be some sort of pushback against our video. I I I, I expected that. And I was 
in real time trying to think of what objections were they going to come up with so we could have those objections pre-answered in the actual video itself. The one thing I did not expect was them to claim that all 3D coordinate systems are based on a flat Earth because reasons. Yeah, this is crazy. I mean, three-dimensional Cartesian coordinates. You have X, Y, and Z. You can put a sphere in that coordinate system. It doesn't magically turn into a flat surface just because it's in three-dimensional Cartesian coordinates. That's nonsense. It's absolutely nonsensical. And it seems that they're hung up on the terminology without understanding what it means. Because I was converting from spherical coordinates, uh-oh, I've got that word in there, spherical coordinates, to Cartesian coordinates. But guess what? They, they stop listening at that point. Because what did I do at the very end? I converted back to spherical coordinates. Why? Because there's nothing in the Cartesian coordinate system that makes the sphere suddenly not work. It works just fine in the Cartesian coordinate system. All I was doing was translating the origin of the coordinates. And I had a dispute with someone who wasn't even a flat earther in your comments about this because they were getting hung up because they were familiar with a different kind of Cartesian coordinate system, one used by, I believe, GPS, the ECEF, uh, Earth-Centered, Earth-Fixed frame of reference, which is a totally different frame of reference than what we use for astronomy. But what I was converting were the right ascension and declination coordinates from what we call top eccentric coordinates, coordinates where your observer position on the rotating Earth is the origin of the coordinate system, to geocentric right ascension declination coordinates where the origin of the coordinate system is the center of the Earth. In both cases, stars are considered to be fixed. That's the coordinate system out beyond us. Obviously, Earth is rotating while all this is taking place, but for the coordinate system that we're using, this coordinate system is not fixed to the Earth's rotation, right? So if you translate the origin of the coordinate system, you're not translating to a coordinate system where the Earth, the Earth is rotating, the whole, you know, the whole coordinate system is rotating with the Earth. That's not happening because this is right ascension declination coordinates. But I'm converting from what we call spherical coordinates, right ascension declination, to geocentric coordinates by way of 3D Cartesian coordinates. There's nothing in that process, though, that suddenly turns the Earth into a flat plane. That just doesn't happen. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's dishonest at best and completely misunderstands what 3D Cartesian coordinates are. These guys oh, don't it was, understand. It, it, was it, it was dishonest because keep, keep in mind that the whole point of bringing that up was not to make any sense. It wasn't to debunk the math. It, was, it, it wasn't to do anything like that. The only reason that TM or MT, as I like to call them, uh, MT said this shit was to try to insert flat earth in it so that people who don't know basic fucking math will read this shit, see the keyword flat earth, and there you go. Base, it's all downhill from there. Right. It's all based on superficial keywords or terms terminology oh, gravity like. yeah um uh kepler newton I, I mean and speaking of which and and this just shows the dishonesty of these motherfuckers because they'll even agree that it works and still say it's deception we all remember what happened last time right with god's humble warrior or servant or whatever the fuck he's calling himself this week yeah he, he literally said guys he literally said that the math matches what we can see but it's still wrong or something like like that actually let, let me get the let, let me get the shorts up let me get the shorts up let's 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 look at some shorts let's look let's look at some nice you know cute tight right up the ass crack shorts you know my favorite kind of shorts i think and i know your favorite shorts as well astronomy life um let's let's look at some shorts and uh let's go ahead and uh click on this uh short right here let's let's uh listen up oh wait did i get the uh let me let me try that again just to make sure that the audio was going through share screen share audio yes okay perfect all right let's 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 look at this short i'm trying to address what, what red is saying about kepler yeah i just i just all i want to know is where is the deception in the math that's it just point to that deception and and we'll and we'll be good the deception is that the math matches what we can see, and it's it's it is still deception. That is an amazing soundbite. Thank you. <laughs> that, is 
That is. I forgot about that one. Fucking amazing. Yeah. I forgot about that one. That is an amazing sound bite. Holy crap. Yes. It um, matches what we can a str- see. Strummy live. Strummy live. Strummy live. Watch, watch your language. It's not holy crap. It's holy shit. And, and yes, I agree with you. Um, it, it's. Uh, <laughs> he admits. He said it himself. He admits that the math matches what we can see. The math works. But it's somehow still deception. I mean, that just that just shows you, doesn't it? The the dogma at play here. It's a, it's a faith based belief that flies in the face of the evidence, and the evidence doesn't matter. You can show them down to the point that the math all adds up. It works. It predicts reality, and they agree with you. Yeah, it does. But it's still deception because reasons. Because you're you know a pedophile, Satanist, whatever. We, I, I literally asked him, please explain to me how you came to the conclusion that there was deception involved with, with Kepler's laws. You know, di- did you do it within the math? And he said, no, I didn't. So you have no math to back up this assertion whatsoever. And he actually admitted that he does not. And so the this whole this whole shit begs the question then how the fuck did you come to the conclusion that there was deception involved and what kind of deception correctly matches reality that's not that's not de- that's not deception at that point so how are you even using this word right right it means something different to them and it it has religious connotations attached to it right it's oh, the hell it does oh my god that, that's that, that's another thing and let you know since this uh the title of this uh hangout is the state of flurf let's go ahead and talk about the state of flurf in one aspect and that is the religious aspect of it now back in the uh ye olden days of red's rhetoric uh yes i did argue against religitards that decided to make the claim that the earth is only six thousand years old and that if you were to drink bleach that that would somehow cure your cancer (laughs) yeah there are there are people that are literally hiding behind religion to sell bleach to people and telling them to consume that shit, saying it's a it's a cancer cure, it'll cure ADD, it will cure AIDS. Um, it's no better than that that Jilly Juice shit where she literally said it can cure the gay. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it, it, these days it feels like you don't even have to get as far as going into religion in order to sell someone on some crackpot idea. Like people are apparently consuming borax now. Not for any religious reason, just because they saw some twit on TikTok who told them to do it. Yeah, and and the thing the thing is is that flat Earth is the same. It's the it's no different than Jilly Juice. It's no uh, different than the dumb motherfuckers that are selling so called consumable bleach that should not be consumed. Um, it's it's no different because that is their version of bleach. But instead of it, you know, killing you. Uh, physically, it's killing you mentally by making you believe some demonstrably incorrect bullshit that will probably make you a reject in society. And the one question I have had for all these individuals out there, are you telling me it is impossible for God to make a sphere and make that work? Are you telling me it's impossible for God to make the force of gravity are you telling me it's impossible for God, a being of unlimited power, to create the awesomeness that is the universe that we're only just starting to understand? Because yeah. keep in mind, God is an all-powerful being. God is what, what I, 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 the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. You know, through him all things are done. Why can't the universe be part of the all things that are done? That's the thing I don't understand. Yeah, I think I, I think a lot of it comes from having a belief system that is based on making God the God of the gaps, right? The idea that their, their conception of God can only exist 
in the gaps that science can't explain. And so to them, when you have that mindset, to increase your faith, to make God a bigger part of your life requires widening the gap to the point that science can explain almost nothing. To the, to the point that science is deception and evil and the enemy of your religious belief, then the God of the gaps becomes all-encompassing. And no no longer do you have to concern yourself with things like mathematics. It's well, when, just something and, God handles, right? Well, and and here's here's another uh, here's another angle to it. If you were to compare the God that flat earthers believe in and the God that any, everyone else believes in. The God that the flat earthers believe in is a weak, pathetic God, because apparently the God that other people believe in has the capability and the power and the awesomeness to create this, you know, this universe that is outrageously huge. It is amazingly huge. It is amazingly powerful. Uh, the the amount of energy within the universe with you got to think. Just, just look at our sun. Our sun is a big ball of fusion awesomeness. And what is it like every second is like a thousand nuclear bombs going off simultaneously or some some ridiculous figure like that. It It's a lot of badassery. There's a lot of badassery go, going on. And now imagine that every point of light in the sky is another ball of fusion awesomeness doing the same shit. And then you got to think, oh, wow, we were able to take pictures where every dot, smudge, and speck is an entire galaxy that has billions of those motherfuckers. Right. And it, again, I think it comes from the, from the uncertainty that if, if you, if you took their faith and said, they suddenly believed that the universe is as we understand it to be you know, uh, huge and vast and there are galaxies millions of light years away, that becomes a threat to their belief system because it means that we are insignificant. And or, they, they have, their belief system is founded on the idea that humans are God's special creation. And, and in order to believe that, it requires the physical reality of the universe we live in to match their belief system you know, where humans actually are the only thing that really matters on this flat plane and everything else above us is just this little tiny thing that is essentially on, um, you know, a little carousel above our crib. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what they have to believe is physically real in order to feel comfortable in their. Yeah. It's all belief. about, it's all about making them feel, feel comfortable and in the process. And this is why I said that the God they believe in is very weak and pathetic because that's all God could create. We're talking about the creator of everything, a being with unimaginable power. And oh, I, that yeah. was that, that was the best that he could do was this flat earth with a fucking salad bowl over it. When in reality, we're talking about this vast universe with black holes and galaxies and neutron stars and shit that could fuck you up without even trying, without even realizing that you're there. I mean, astronomy lies, let me ask you, if you stood on a neutron star, what would happen to you? <laughs> I would cease to be. I would become an atom thick, you know? Uh, and, and what would that mean for the neutron star? Absolutely nothing. Not a damn thing, exactly. And that's <laughs> it. Like, it's it's an ego thing, right? It's like, it, it would wound their their ego, sadly too much to accept that the universe is so vast and we are nothing but and i think they've missed the point of the bible in in telling the, the stories the bible tells like humans aren't so great if you look at the uh, on the whole humans and, and you know keep screwing things up and god's chosen people keep screwing things up and we're kind up in a of bad shit. way we're kind of crap and you know the 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 lessons that, that that Jesus passes down in the Bible is like, you're not all that in a bag of chips, right? Be humble. They've forgotten that. And and <laughs> no boy, what was it? The uh, uh, you know, their the pride is one of the seven deadly sins. Oh, they're full of that shit, aren't they? Yes, yes. It's 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 a system that is based on pride, and they're and the people who sell that system are selling that. It's the idea that you are. 
the most important thing in the world, and everything does revolve around you, quite literally. And, and that's so, why everyone who doesn't think exactly as they do is, uh, is you know, a pedophile. But it's also why it's seductive. It's also, I think, why it's so seductive to some people is because it re- it puts them at the center of a universe that does revolve around them on top of giving them the special knowledge that no one else has. And now they can feel safe to ridicule people who are, you know, more educated and ostensibly in a higher position of authority when it comes to science than they are. So I think it has a lot of seduction for them. And that's why I think the trouble is we can present evidence all day long, but to get through to those people, you have to attack the, fundamental beliefs and the problems therein that underlie all that the ego that has been built up over that it's and, it's it's well and, it's we we have a, a technical term for that it's called small penis syndrome where people can't get over the fact that's you know it's not all about them and that they're not all that in a bag of chips as you said yeah yeah it's 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 very difficult to do i think especially over the internet because the minute you start to attack someone's fundamental beliefs about things like this, the defense shields get raised, you know, Mm -hmm. and they are not going to take in that information. Unfortunately, I think it's something that can really only be addressed. If you really want to convert someone away from it, you would have to be their personal friend in real life and have a real frank and honest discussion with them. But the problem I'm, I think one of the problems that is going to continue to drive this going forward into the future is that, society is is becoming more and more fragmented in that sense we're on our phones all the time i mean i know i'm sounding like the old man on his lawn saying get off my lawn kids and my day yeah, yeah, we all know you're an old yeah. decrepit fuck i'm an old point. decrepit but honestly like who, who really sits down and has over the dinner table conversations with their friends and invites them over for parties in person anymore like that does just in my experience like that doesn't happen like it used to and that leads to frankly i i feel like a society that is uh, more isolated and where people can drift off into these conspiracies easier and easier without a, a support network to help catch them, bring them back and say, what are you doing? Wait, wait, these guys are crazy, you know, snap out of it. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and give them a, give them an alternative. Right. Like I said before, there's seduction in it in part because of the sense of community. And if you don't have an alternative to that, a, a strong su- social support system, then yeah, it can be really easy to fall into that. But if you do have that kind of strong social support system, I think it's probably a lot harder to fall into that rabbit hole because you don't have a need for it. You don't, you don't have a need for it as a comfort blanket to feel better about yourself and coddle yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, A-Reds and AL dropped in to say hello. Hello, thanks for the super chat. Uh, Bodie McBoatface is always a welcome here and a great guy. Um, got to run, work in half an hour. I read it's like get in touch about the October SpaceX uh, Falcon Heavy launch. I don't know. I will check my Twitter to find out. But thank you very much for reminding me that I actually have to check my Twitter every now and then. So I'll get on that after the stream is over. But thank you very much for the super chat. Um, and 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 the thing is that I had like a a bullet like bullet points I want to go through, but we've kind of you know gone off the rails here, but we actually touched on some very important topics where it's literally going back to the state of flurf. So we just naturally arrived here and dude, you're absolutely right. The only way to break people out of this conspiratorial mindset is to be their friend in reality, to address the underlying you know, inferiority complex that they have to get them to understand that they're being taken for a fucking ride by a whole bunch of scam artists that want to lead them down a path of dishonesty. And unless you're able to have that connection with that person, you're absolutely right. It doesn't matter what evidence we present to them. It doesn't matter how good of a job we do. Because guess what? We did exactly what they wanted us to do. That's the only reason I stuck with the Nikon P1000 for as long as I did. It's not because it's the best camera for the job. It's because they have a love affair with that camera. And it is widely accepted by the Flat Earth cult that that's the camera you use because it's going to be the camera that's going to, you know, massage your confirmation bias. That's the only reason I'm using the damn thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's there's a lot to unpack there too, but um 
I, I I'm really happy with what we were able to do. I mean, one one of my favorite vids of ours actually is doing the head to head comparison. I've been wanting to do that for the longest time, and I'm glad we finally did get around to that doing the head to head. We can show the people that. Listen, objectively speaking, the Nikon P1000 is not the best camera for the job, but that's the only camera you motherfuckers go to for some reason. And that's because, you know, trolley flat earthers sold this idea to you that this is the only camera that works. And for some reason you believed it. What's wrong with a telescope? Oh, telescopes are part of the conspiracy. How? This, oh, yeah. th th this is why... This is why I say that the delusion is strong with these people. And when you get to the point where the delusion is this strong, you then have to ask yourself the question, or in, in my case, I had to ask myself this question. Was it really worth all the effort that we went to to make that last video about measuring the distance of the sun? Was it worth driving all the way to Colorado and then back again and then spending the next few months putting this shit together? Was it worth it? Was it worth waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning to measure the altitude, size, and speed of the International Space Station? Was it worth the thousands of miles that you and I have both driven to capture these launches and literally record history in the making? Was it worth, you know, standing out in the sun all day while a hurricane was barreling towards me to show that the angular size of the sun does not change throughout the day? Like we, at this point, I'm asking myself that question or all these questions. Um, I'm asking myself all of these questions of whether or not it was actually worth it. I still coming back to the answer. Yes, but not for the reasons that would be be obvious which is that i am doing this so that flat earthers no no longer have to live in a perpetual state of dumb fuckitude they actually now have an opportunity to learn something based on this videos but you're coming we're, we're always coming to the conclusion that it doesn't matter how good of a video you make how good your data is it's not going to matter because uh you know it's either but my holy book or but my community yeah, it, it I like you said, I don't think it's worth it if your your sole objective is to try to convert people out of it. I don't think it's going to be effective at that. No, absolutely not. And that's and 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 just to complete the thought, didn't mean to cut you off there, but just to complete the thought, the reason why I still say it was worth it is because it was still really cool to do all those things. I actually had fun measuring the distance of the sun. I actually had fun filming all these rocket launches and capturing the money shot of the launch to landing in one continuous shot. I actually have had fun um, measuring the altitude, size, and speed of the International Space Station. I had fun doing all of these things. And I also had fun working with you, Astronomy Live, and you know the sleepless nights that we spent you know, perfecting your software and getting the tracking down and all that stuff. I actually had fun doing it. But imagine if someone was doing it just to educate flat earthers they would be hopelessly disappointed oh yeah yeah definitely and i i think you found the right answer there in terms of uh the motivation it, is, it comes from what you want to be able to achieve and what you want to do like i i agree with you completely like for me it's it's a blast to be able to do this stuff and and the enjoyment is there in just the doing of it and and seeing it completed um Frankly, it's it can uh, serve as a catalyst to great things if if done properly. I think, At, for example, the reason I developed the rocket tracking software is because from day one, I I kind of saw it coming down the track that when SpaceX would start landing their rockets, people were going to say they were fake, and so I started the process fairly early on, before even the first landing, of developing software to ultimately be able to do uh, joystick based rocket tracking and ultimately you know now predictive tracking and all that so that we could get that money shot right and so that we could do this kind of uh, rocket launch video videography um, and yes at one point it would seem that that's motivated just to prove someone wrong on the internet but beyond that even if there was no one saying that it was fake or whatever it wouldn't matter to me if they all went away tomorrow, it wouldn't matter to me. I still enjoy the process of doing it. And the products we got out of it, the results, the videos are fantastic. They're just gorgeous. They're, and it is they're, capturing they're, history in, in the making. Yeah. 
it's it's art it's absolute art and yes i i do have to agree with this comment right here that you know watching them completely lose their shit over our footage was also really really fun to watch i'm not gonna lie that was that was a very big added bonus right there um but you you have to be the type of person that enjoys doing this anyway in order to make it worth it and you know, I, I, I do enjoy this stuff. I, I enjoy it. and But here's the thing. I don't feel as though if I was doing it just for the enjoyment of it, that I would be on any sort of obligation to do it within a particular time frame. Like when I when, when I said to, uh, to everyone that I'm working on a video and I want to get it out, it was for the reason to combat a just a tidal wave of misinformation that was being posted on Twitter. And fuck, I'm calling it Twitter from now on. Because remember, Astronomy Live, that we were actually um, taking our time with the project and making sure everything is absolutely perfect. But then we realized that there was just an explosion on Twitter and it all focused around the distance to the sun. And so when, when, we, when we would do this on our own time, we were enjoying the process, but then we had to rush and then it made it not so fun anymore because we saw what was happening on Twitter. We, we wanted to address the bullshit right then and there, but we knew that we would be wasting our time addressing on Twitter when we are in the process of making this video. So let's go ahead and try to minimize the amount of harm that's being done on Twitter by getting this video done as soon as possible so that it can start addressing that bullshit. That was our, that was our thought process. We need to get this done quickly so that we can quickly address the bullshit. And, you know, and that's all well and good, but it made something that we enjoyed doing. It, it, it made it laborious. It made it tedious and, not really all that enjoyable if i'm to be completely honest with you yeah no it was it was a slog to, to get through it at the end we had a lot of work to do and very little time to do it i mean we were trying to catch a wave there not just on twitter but youtube as well i mean i i was sending you the screenshots of the analytics of just um what people were searching for and there was a spike in people searching on the distance of the sun on youtube at that time so i think it was a goal certainly for me that we try to get that out as soon as possible to try to catch the ones who haven't fallen into it yet who are just starting to question who see this stuff popping up on twitter or elsewhere and they're like yeah how do we know the distance to the sun how how do we know that is it just because nasa says it and i thought you know our video was perfect for addressing that for those people absolutely 110 percent and, uh, and like I said, I'm still happy um, that we were able to get that done. But this also leads to, you know, the current day state state of flurf, uh, state of flurf, you know, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on YouTube and stuff like that is um, it's it, it's a time consuming process to do all this good work, knowing full well that's just going to be rejected the very moment they click that link. Because I was actually timing that one dude that we were uh, messaging. I don't remember his name. But I sent him the link to, to the video. And I'll try to find the tweet. But um, I said, this video is 42 minutes long. And you replied, oh, that video is bullshit within five minutes. You didn't even watch it, you dumbass. Oh, yeah. No, I, I wouldn't expect them to. And, and again, without trying to jump ahead too much. I think one thing that I've come to realize and I really want to promote the idea of is to get involved in community you know, community notes on Twitter. Um, I think this is the best way to combat things going forward with flat earth or any kind of space denial, science denial kind of nonsense. If people were to, and, and this is for everyone in the chat right now, hundred people watching, whatever, guys, please, you're, you're people watching this generally are pretty intelligent. And if you are and you, you think you can do a good job, you know, reviewing the stuff, you don't have to go to all this effort of making a video and putting it up on YouTube. Just get involved with community notes, sign up for an account, get a community notes account. You don't have to have a verified account or anything like that. You don't have to pay X, whatever, to do this. You can you can have a free account and do it. That's what I do. And you get involved with this. You're able to then suggest community notes 
And I will say it's not 100% effective because it, it, it's useless against small accounts. The note has to reach a certain critical mass of consensus before it gets shown on the tweet. And basically what that means in reality is it's only good against large accounts, but that's where most of the damage happens, right? That's like the yeah. hub of this stuff, the Stu Peters of the world, the, the Alex Steins of the world. So you guys, if you make a community notes account, you can then start to attach uh, links to debunking information from Red or myself or others who've actually shown that, yeah, these spacecraft are real. They're going where they say they are, blah, blah, blah. You can just link to that and attach it. And that is powerful because that gets seen by hundreds of thousands of people. That will get seen by more people. If you if you do that, your, your, your contributions to debunking will ultimately be seen by more people than him or myself combined, honestly. Mm. I, I, I think for combating stuff on that website that yeah that's going to be the best way forward and um i, I do also want to uh, highlight that while elon musk has done a lot of dumbass things on that website community notes is probably the best thing to ever happen for that site because th there is a lot of dumb fuckery going on when it comes to anti-vax nonsense or flat earth nonsense basic basic anti-science nonsense in general and the community uh, the community notes at least for the science aspect not so much the political aspect but the sciencey aspect they've been spot on the community notes state explicitly no global global warming is a thing and we're fucking causing it no viruses are a thing and you should probably get vaccinate vaccinations against it and no the earth isn't flat it's round and here's how we know they've at least been good on that front and so if you want to tackle them uh, uh tackle that misinformation on twitter don't get into a pissing contest with them on twitter don't even engage with that shit just community note the fuck out of it because when it gets posted it's that's that's gonna follow the tweet it's yeah. gonna follow the tweet whether they and, like it or not and it's gonna be amazing and it's anonymous and and so to back up your point there don't make the mistake i did with uh oh what's his name ben ben owens i i made the mistake of replying to benjamin owens one time and he blocked me he almost immediately blocked me which is unfortunate now because i can't community note him so when you do this don't reply don't make any public showing don't mention it. Don't don't get into a fight in the Twitter comments. Just add a note to these big accounts like Benjamin Owens, Stu Peters, you know the ones, the ones who have you know hundreds of thousands or millions of followers, and you you have to target the ones that are going to get uh, viewed a lot. Like you know the India thing when that blew up and it was getting a hundred thousand views a tweet. That's where you hit it because that's where you'll have enough people seeing it that it can gather a consensus and. When you first join community notes, you won't be able to write tweets. Or you won't be able to write notes right away. You'll only be able to rate them. Okay, so you'll have to you'll have to have uh, correctly rated five different tweets, which is harder than it sounds because again, it has to reach that critical mass first before you're allowed to start writing notes. So it takes time. So there's probably more users who have the community notes enabled but aren't able to write than there are who are able to write. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. But the point is the new ones, the people just joining, will only be able to rate it. And it has to reach a certain critical mass before it gets attached. But if you if you reply to them, it gives them a chance to block you. Then you can't note them. So don't even do that. Just drop a note and target the tweets that are getting lots of views and target them early on. It's important to hit them as early as you can within the first few hours if possible because that's when they're still growing that's when it can um, become publicly viewed. And then, like like we said, it gets attached every time it gets retweeted, every time it gets posted somewhere else. That community note comes right along with it. And that is more effective than anything I frankly see any other platform doing to combat misinformation. YouTube should consider this kind of what, feature. But what I would know. Uh, what I just uh, I just thought of is that what what if like a whole bunch of flat earth debunkers got together on one community note profile? and just went completely ape that way that one profile hits that critical mass relatively quickly and that one community profile has a better chance of its input being uh recommended because of how much activity is so, on that community profile so the out i will say like the algorithm is designed to prevent that kind of behind the scenes gaming the system um what they do is 
it has to reach a critical mass of accounts agreeing with with this community note who don't normally agree with each other. Like it's got if, if you had a group of people that all had community notes accounts that were rating each other's notes to try to promote them, it won't work because it'll see that you guys are always agreeing with each other. So we're not going to count those votes, basically. So you can't. Well, well, I'm not saying multiple. I'm talking about one account, just one, one account being logged in by multiple people, so that whenever a well-known flat earther starts spewing bullshit on the internet, uh, or in this case, Twitter, that whoever sees it first can log into that account and make that community note. It's still only one account making the note, but it's all being made from the same account. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, uh, I don't know what the rules are on that, but I don't know what the rules yeah. are either. At but this point, I don't, really get, I don't really give a fuck what the rules are because, you know, whatever combats the misinformation and, you know, I'm, I'm all for it, especially given the fact that these that these guys are literally paying $8 a month to try and become somewhat <laughs> popular on the site. And to have yeah. that community note be promoted on their backs, oh, so good. So good. So now they, they thought they hit they hit a winner. They thought they knocked it out of the park. Wow, look how popular this this one tweet I made is is going because I said that you know India is involved in some CGI fakery or whatever, only to then at the exact same time carry a note along with it saying, Hey, this tweet's bullshit, and here's and here's why. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's amazing, and I love it, and I and and I want more of that. That would be a great way to combat this this misinformation. I mean, quite honestly, if I had forty four billion dollars to spend on a failing social media platform, uh, I would I would basically make that a thing to all flat Earth centric accounts. That hey, if if you're if you have a flat Earther account and you post some obvious bullshit on the internet or on this uh, on this website, I'm gonna give trusted sources the opportunity to correct you and have it pinned to your tweet in perpetuity you, you know it drives them crazy too right when when oh, they get community you know they must drive them up the walls i'm sure uh, and that's why i would do it i would do it i, I would I, man that shit would be done religiously if i own twitter where it is guaranteed that if you're a flat earther and you spew bullshit on the internet there's going to be a community note following every single one of your te every single one of your tweets that explains explicitly and directly why you're wrong right right it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. Well, that is if I actually had forty four billion dollars to spend on a failing social media platform, which I don't. So yeah, you know, one can dream. <laughs> well, you could probably find better uses for that money anyway. But I really, better. really could find better uses for forty four fucking billion dollars. That that you know, spend the last thing I would want to do actually is spend it on a social media platform. But um, with that, let's go ahead and reach the conclusion uh, of this stream, which is uh, what do we predict is going to happen in the future when it comes to flat earth? Basically over the next year that I'm gone, what are we expecting to happen with flat earth? Is anything going to change worth a shit within flat earth? Are people suddenly going to get their heads out of their ass um, and realize that they've been wrong the entire time? Will, will we see such a miracle or will it be more of the same that we've been seeing over the last few years where people progressively get more dumb and more dishonest when it comes to promoting their flat earth bullshit story? So I have my own uh, feelings on that. I have my own prediction. But Astronomy Live, I want to hear uh, want to hear your thoughts on that. Where do we where do you see flat earth going? Yeah, I think we're going to continue to see more of it through uh, paid up accounts on on Twitter that have the the blue check and are paying Twitter for higher exposure in the in the uh, algorithm, and it'll be focused on as superficial as possible meme level stuff. Um, and we're going to see more misrepresentations of you know real missions in space. We've got. Um, Actually, one just coming up here in a few weeks in September. Uh, Osiris Rex comes back. You remember Osiris Rex? Oh right? yes, I remember Osiris. Is is that a uh, Osiris Rex? Was that the uh, dog leg uh, launch? 
It might have been. I can't. I wasn't at the launch. I remember you were at the launch. I believe, right? Yes. Yeah, so Cyrus Rex was the uh, was the. Uh, hang on. Uh, if I remember correctly, that was the that was the dog leg launch where they only had one solid rocket booster on the son of a bitch. Oh, oh god, oh, I, yeah. I was right. Yeah. yeah, it it was the one solid rocket booster. That thing, that thing, power slid off the launch pad. That was dope. Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes more sense. When you say dog leg, I think of the, the Falcon 9 doing the dog leg around the coast of Florida to go south, but that's not what you meant. You meant the power slide off the pad. Yeah, it, it was, so uh, the Atlas V is asymmetric when it comes to its solid rocket boosters. So it was, you had the, the, the main rocket, but you had one, one solid rocket booster just hanging hanging off the side. It was... It, it was a weird looking launch vehicle, but that was the rocket that brought Osiris Rex uh, to space. Um, let me go ahead and bring this up. Let me open image a new tab. Do, do, do. There we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then show this and share screens. Boom. That. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, see, so that was the launch of Osiris Rex. And as you can see, it only has one solid rocket booster. Just one. Just just hanging on the on the side there. Just one. That's all it needs. Just just needed a little extra kick, you know, Kerbal style to get it up into orbit. Yeah, but what, what I like about this is that you can see uh this gap in the uh in the launch uh or their version of a strong back, whatever it's called. Um so you can see how this is straight up, and when it launched, it was off to the side when this picture was taken. <laughs> yeah. So it, it literally, it literally like launched and then Tokyo drifted a little bit. <laughs> yep. So yeah, it, it was a. I don't know if this is the correct term for it, but the way that I I uh, described it here was a dog leg launch, just dog leg to the side. Yeah. So Osiris Rex. Uh... We well, I tracked it uh, a little bit coming around Earth for a gravity assist. Oh gosh, that was a couple of years ago. You you were out there with me. I had the worst. I time still have the footage. I still have the footage of your uh, telescope. I still have a time lapse of your uh, telescope tracking Osiris Rex. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to admit, I struggled most of the night. Uh, I was trying to figure out why it wasn't working. I had a bug in my program that I actually debugged that night in real time and fixed. And then we got on Osiris Rex. So I've got a picture of Osiris Rex. Uh, going by Earth for a gravity assist. Well, went out to uh, uh, Bennu and grabbed a sample. It's coming back. That sample is of an asteroid is coming back uh, this coming month, uh, September, coming up in a few weeks, and it's going to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. And uh, I believe they're just hitting it into the ground and then picking it up when it lands. Uh, but I'm going to be trying to track it as it comes back. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully I get good weather and I'm able to get some pictures of it before it re-enters. Uh, so we're looking I, forward to that in a few weeks. I, I do remember that when Osiris-Rex uh, launched, they said it was going to be a multi-multi-year mission. I was like, wow, that's so long. And here it is. We're all old, decrepit fucks now. Yes, we are here in the future. From the future, we were speaking from, to you. Yes, yes. From the future. And yeah, that, that, that thing. So yeah, Osiris-Rex. Oh man, that was that was something. But yeah, I remember that that launch. Let me see. I just turned on my uh, my drive here. Um, so let me see if I can actually find this launch because I know it was an Atlas uh, Atlas Five. It was a four eleven. Uh, that was the uh, configuration that was in the four one one configuration. I think the only time I've ever seen a four one one. I don't think I've seen. Another one besides that, if I remember correctly, at least. All right, so type in 411 on the search. Oh, I forgot I used the eye telescope for this as well. So, yeah, I got some images of the eye telescope in addition to the image I got from here in Florida. And I did some measurements of it. I determined the orbit. I showed it was going out to Bennu. Oh, this is going to be sweet. So, yeah. Here, uh, I'll put in the chat my video as well so people can see, like, based on the tracking we did that night, I was able to confirm it was headed to the asteroid, and now I'm going to be seeing it coming back, and I'll be able to trace it back from coming from the asteroid. So you've got the launch. I've got the tracking in space showing it left Earth. It went out to Bennu. 
and now it's coming back from Bennu and re-entering the atmosphere. Like that's not a natural object. Asteroids hopefully don't do that, right? Unless they're hitting Earth, but they certainly don't uh, intelligently change their their orbits in order to go visit an asteroid and then come back to Earth. Yep, exactly. Um, question: uh, What was the launch date of the Osiris uh, launch? Let me see. Osiris launch date was on September eighth, two thousand sixteen. So this thing launched in two thousand sixteen, guys. Let's see, man, can't believe it's been coming up on seven years since that. Wow. Since since I saw that, yeah, that was. Uh, that was interesting. Oh my god. So let's see. Let me look up 2016 launches. So what while you do that, to come back to answer your question that you started this whole thing on. I predict a lot of flat earth butthurt off this, to be honest. Uh and I expect they'll fully ignore anything I produce on this. But that's again not my fundamental reason for doing it. That's just, you know, the side fringe benefit. But to me, being able to track these things and record this history in the making, like that's where it's at. Because there was a, a young teenage astronomy live one time who had a Sky and Telescope magazine and happened to see a picture that an amateur astronomer had taken of an Apollo mission traveling to or from the moon. And that blew little astronomy live's mind to think that an amateur astronomer with his own home, you know, backyard telescope is able to actually see these spacecraft in deep space traveling, you know, between the earth and the moon, what could I potentially see with modern technology? Right. And so that inspired me to get into deeper into amateur astronomy, astrophotography, and now tracking these spacecraft. So this is a dream come true for me personally, and it's got nothing to do with flat earth. I know. And I, and I found the, the footage I did. And that's the reason why I didn't actually call it, uh, what it should be i actually named after the person it was named uh after uh so let me do this real quick if i may let's relive the glory days because that's kind of the reason why we're here as well so do do, do let's go to window media player there it is this is uh this is the launch of osiris rex and as you can see that one solid rocket booster off the side of it Wow, that's really good. It's good quality. That one solid, solid rocket booster. Let me go forward a bit. I want to find... Uh, let me find us. Get closer to SEP here. Was this the uh, P900 at the time? This was the P900. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this was before I got the 1000. So this is a P900, uh, another flat earther camera of choice here. So... <laughs> I mean, it was all it, it was it was Nikon's all the way down, my friend. <laughs> it was Nikon's all the way down. But um what we're going to be seeing here soon, I believe, is uh the solid rocket booster detaches. As you can see, I kind of uh there it is, there's solid rocket oh, booster. Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that tumbling away. That's cool. Tumbling away. Just one, just one booster. That's all it needed. Just one booster. So that was fun. I remember that. Ah, memories. Fucking memories. But yeah, that was uh, the launch of Osiris Rex. I was there to see that. And now it's coming back to Earth. So you, I saw it during the launch. You were able to capture it in space. And now it's coming back. This just shows how much effort we put onto this shit. And the one thing we got for all of our work was, um, <laughs> I'm going to have to ask you for that footage though. I'll, of course I'll give you credit, but I, I would like to have the original video on that so that when, when it eventually comes back in a few weeks and I hopefully capture some images of it, I can put together a whole, you know, before, during and after kind of thing showing, here it was at launch. Red's rhetoric got that. Here it is in deep space. I got that. Here it is coming back. The whole thing beginning to end. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course you can have the footage. I'll I'll will be sending that to you in a uh, in a G drive. We'll love to see what you uh, come up with. Uh, I also got a few um a few pictures actually. So I'm gonna go ahead and show these uh, images. Let me go ahead and bring these things up. Oh, I actually caught something else. 
No fucking way. I actually did. Wow, really? No fucking way. Cool. Um, so I also have a uh, GoPro shot of me actually filming the launch. <laughs> Let me uh, bring this up and uh, let's go ahead and share screens on this. Look at look at this shot right here. Oh yeah. So you can you see go. you can see the rocket in the background. And you can see me tracking it with the Nikon P900. It even says Nikon P900 right up here. <laughs> Look that at our, that. Was that our old spot to uh, Charles M. Rowland? Or was that yep, that was our okay. old spot before they shut it down and yeah. decided to take all the fun away from us. Yeah, you can thank the original Falcon Heavy for that, the way people were blocking up traffic and police couldn't even clear the road. Like That was, that was psychotic. It, it was, but you can see the uh, the trail from the solid rocket booster and the camera. So yeah, you can have you can have all these uh, videos and pictures that I that I took from that from that day. That was that was that that was a fun launch to go to. That was that was a fun launch to go to. So very very happy to see that the mission is coming back and it's going to be successful. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be gonna be awesome, but. Getting back to the actual subject, so where do I see uh, flat Earth or, uh, flat Earth going from here? Uh, just like you, I see a lot of butt hurt in the future. Um, here's what I believe is going to happen over the next year. So over the next year, there's going to be more accomplishments in space. I imagine there's going to be. Um, I imagine we're going to see the launch of Vulcan. We're also going to see maybe, maybe. A test launch of uh, not just uh, not just uh, Dream Glenn? Chaser. Oh, what Dream Chaser! I, I thought you were going for New Glenn. Yeah, Dream Chaser. No, no, no. Yeah. New Glenn's not going to happen until twenty twenty six. My <laughs> <God>. <laughs> not not New Glenn. Absolutely, yeah. there is no fucking chance in hell that shit takes off next year. Absolutely. You never know. You never know. It might. You know, I do. I know. I know. I know. It took him this long to make. I mean, and. I mean, it took them this long to make a flying dick. And when they had one malfunction, they haven't flown since. I mean, to be fair, they, they do stick people on that thing. So you want to be sure. But yeah, they do stick people on that thing. Yes, absolutely. Um, but keep in mind, the abort system worked. So and that was if i remember correctly an older an older booster it wasn't yeah. their new shit so their new shit should be improved in a sufficient number of ways to guarantee a safe flight and not only that they also demonstrated in an actual launch and with an actual failed booster that the launch abort system can do the job to uh take the crew capsule away from the doomed rocket so in reality, everything worked. So the only question I have is, why have they not returned the flight yet? It just it just boggles my mind. And then if it takes them this long to return to flight with New Shepard, how can I possibly expect New Glenn to go anywhere? They they have they have a uh, they have a um a saying. And I don't know what the Latin phrase is, but it translates to step by step ferociously. Oh my fucking God, they're sure taking their fucking time. You know, step by step, you know, take your time, take your time. Oh, they take their fucking time. All right. So that shit's not happening next year. Probably won't happen the year after that. Probably 2026. I'm going to give it three years. I'm going to bet it. We are not going to see new Glenn get off the ground until three years from now. At this point, I'm 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 going to follow through on Elon time when it comes to to Jeff Bezos and his rocket company. I mean, that's fair, I guess. Yes, but uh, but the actual spacecraft I was talking about was uh, Dream Chaser. I think Dream Chaser is going to go to the internet to the International Space Station as a cargo spacecraft, and that is going to cause a shit ton of butt hurt. Um, we, I believe it's going to launch on a Vulcan rocket and that, and the Vulcan ro rocket by itself is going to lead to a cataclysmic amount of butt hurt. I imagine we're going to see, uh, more spacecrafts 
coming on up or more spacecrafts being launched out into the solar system i believe we're going to see probably the the uh the beginning phases of manufacturing and testing for a uh, new planetary uh exploring crafts like for example dragonfly dragonfly is the one that i'm looking forward to yeah oh yeah so all this will come together and it's going to stretch the meme factory of flat of flat earthism i think to its absolute breaking point so i guess what i'm trying to say rather long-windedly i do admit but what i'm going to say is this is that flat earth in terms of having actual discussions even if they are cataclysmic dumpster fires that that shit's going to be over next year we're not even going to have the luxury of dumpster fires. The only thing we're going to get from the Flat Earth camp is memes. I believe next year, Flat Earth, for the most part, maybe not in totality, but for the most part, is going to devolve into a meme war. Where every piece of scientific information you provide, every measurement you provide them, every image you provide them, it doesn't matter what you provide them it will immediately be debunked with a flurf meme i believe that's what's going to happen yeah no i, I totally i totally agree i think we're heading that way already and we, we are we are heading that way and 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 that's why i didn't want to place a a, a time frame on my hiatus because i may just look at the state of things and be like do i really want to come back to this shit there's nothing here. There's nothing here that's even remotely entertaining about this. At least with Jaronism, I got to spar with him every now and then. If any, if everything's just been reduced to a fucking meme war at this point, then what's the point? I mean, you will get the occasional person who's just so either a Poe or off their rocker that yeah, that we, they're, that we get, they're, we, we get you know, the, 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 the occasional iggies, the Iggies of the world, right? I mean, you'll get those, but. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we get the, the occasional, the math matches what we can see, and it's still deception. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, but you're right. Like the major players, the Jaronisms and, and those those guys, they're not going to submit themselves to actual debates with people like you. They're, they're just not going to do it. No, it's, it's not going to happen. And this is why we are seeing – this is why we're seeing a lot more flat earthers – go down the route of demonizing like accusing you of being a pedo based on absolutely fucking nothing and it, it it just shows that they're not interested in having any sort of conversation whatsoever even if that conversation is going to be dishonest from the very beginning on their part like they know going into this conversation that they're going to fucking lie their ass off they know it but now they're not even going to go that far they're just going to post the meme, call it a day, and that's going to be it. And that's going to be the end of it. Oh yeah, that, absolutely. I mean, that that's that kind of disgusting, over the top defamation. That that's not designed to have a discussion. That's designed to shut down the discussion. That's that the objective of that is to get a scalp. They they want they want me to you know lock down my account and go away. They, they're not interested in debate, and that's not they're not interested in the truth. It's just. This guy is pissing me off. This guy is, you know, refuting my stuff and making me look bad. So I'm going to I'm going to come after him. I'm going to make everyone think he's a pedophile. So yeah. I'm going to try to connect him to some person he's never even heard of before who I know is a pedophile and uh, I'm going to say that you're you're working with him. What? Yeah, exactly. And also uh to uh, uh I have to give a big huge shout out to uh Gary Wubing. So with uh with this dude in the live chat, you have been one of the regulars here spewing demonstrably incorrect bullshit in my live chat. You have provided entertainment for a while, but since I'm going away for, for a bit, I'm going to now uh, hide you from from uh, from this uh, channel, from your second channel. Because if you remember, Gary Wubing, I uh, blocked your main account for spewing demonstrably incorrect bullshit that you were already corrected on. Um, well, you're, you've been doing it again on your second account and I kept your second account around for a while. Um, but, um, the only reason I did was because it was, 
I knew it was just a a little bit of an inconvenience that you literally had to sign out of your actual account to log on to your second account just to come to my live stream that happens at random times to spew demonstrably incorrect bullshit in my live chat. I knew that was a process for you, and so I kept it going for, for a while. But now that I'm about to go on hiatus, I have no need to to watch your shit in my comment section or even in any live stream I happen to do in the future anymore. I think, I think I'm done at this point. So you can make a third account, maybe no one's stopping you, but that's just going to make it more inconvenient for you. In which case I might keep you around for a little bit, but this is, this is my farewell to you, Gary. Well, uh, so you have been wrong this entire time. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're done here. <laughs> uh, and, and to address his, his final comment in this chat before you blocked him, don't worry, Gary, I've got a video coming for you. Don't exactly. Worry. You, you, you want to see, you want to see stellar motion. You want, you want to see something other than star trails. You want to see how stars move because he was already informed of that. He, oh, I he was all he was already informed that he's been sent the he's been sent your links on that you have posted on Twitter. He knows of these things, and this is why it is clear as crystal that this dude is just viciously di uh, dishonest. Oh yeah, I know. I'm like just he using takes, I'm just using he takes dishonesty to a whole new level. I'm just trying to use it as an opportunity to shamelessly plug my forthcoming video. That's all. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> I've got but, a video coming on on the, the motion of the stars over the centuries. You guys are gonna love it. Anyway, sorry. That's and, it. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. And uh, but yeah, I see I see no actual conversations being had in the future. There will be the occasional so-called conversations, but those are gonna be very few and far between. And you are gonna have to bend over backwards to get a flat earther to agree to that shit. You're you're gonna have to you know, coddle them and be like, it's okay. We promise to go easy on you. Yes, there will be plenty of lube and you can give them all the guarantees in the world, but flat earthers are becoming more timid to have these conversations. They would rather respond with memes and do no actual work, do no actual thinking. I think that's where we're going. And I may look at that and be like, you know what? I, I'm all right. I don't actually need to come back to this. What's the point if this is all I'm going to get? But like I said, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. And even if, and guys, I want to be very clear about this. Even if I decide that flat earthism is no longer worth my time, that I've done all the things I needed to do, I've debunked it to the point of no return, and I'm satisfied with the amount of work and the accomplishments that I've been able to do on this fucking website, even if I'm just like fucking over it, I'm still going to come back, we're still going to have fun, still going to give you guys a good time, I'll just make videos about other shit, would be nice to branch out a little bit and talk about other stuff, and if you're going to be into the other things that I'll uh, that I'll talk about, and if you're going to be into the other subjects that I may talk about, then stick around. If not, well, there's always the unsubscribe button. It's always there for you. You know, you can always unsubscribe, and I'm not going to hold it against you. Because I've been doing nothing but flat earth for a number of years. It would be quite jarring to start doing other stuff. Yeah. And did you want to circle back for uh, Hugh Jars' uh, uh, super chat? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, please, please, please. Um, let me see. That was way up. 799. Hey, Reds, can you please send me on my way by saying, piss off, you fat furk. Would be great soundbite for the end of my videos. Oh, okay. So do I actually say furk or do I say fuck? I have to, I have to be very, I, I need, I need, uh, I need information. Oh, he gave you, inf he said, uh, he said later, he said, of course, I don't mean furk. He doesn't mean furk. So it's fuck. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what he means. Okay. Ah, man. The only the only thing is that uh, I... Hmm. Now, you know I like toilet humor. We talk about taking big, healthy, steamy shits. We, 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 we make all sorts of jokes. Uh, I just... Uh, 
I just don't know. Would this would this uh, count me as being fat phobic, or do I get a get out of jail free card because somebody is literally paying me to say it? I mean, he's screaming it now in the chat. Yes, he is screaming it now in the chat. So, so I have no choice but to say it. At that. And you know, okay, I, I think I think he's giving you the card. He's giving he's you giving, the card. He's giving me the get out of jail free card. Yeah, I think he is. Okay, because you do know there's going to be some jackass out there they're gonna say that oh my god red's rhetoric is fat phobic because he said this shit i mean i've already been accused of being a pedophile based on nothing so how much worse actually yeah that is objectively worse i have to say that is that is objectively worse okay you you convinced me see 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 how that works okay so piss off you fat furk but not furk it's actually fuck okay under understand i'll go ahead and do this so let's go ahead and make sure we give a huge arse a, uh, a soundbite, one that he can use in his videos. So, here we go. <clears throat> Gotta get warmed up here. What's, what is it? Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, di, da, or some shit like that? Yeah, something like that. So, something like that, okay. <clears throat> I should probably get a drink with the whistle. A little bit. <laughs> got gotta gotta prepare for for shit like this, you know. When when Hugh Jars pays you eight dollars Australian, you don't fuck around. You give him the highest quality soundbite. Okay, let's let's let me go to the fridge. Um, Astronomy Live, uh, sing "Twinkle Twinkle Little Star." Um, okay. Didn't really give me much warning on that. I don't sing. So the, give me a few minutes here. I'm going to get uh, 11 Labs AI trained up on uh, somebody's voice. Who should okay, we get to that do? was Astronomy Live singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. I am now back from the fridge. All, All right. right. Well, you just you just canceled my whole plan to <laughs> deep fake someone's voice into singing it on my behalf. Anyway, go, go on. Uh, uh, also, question. Can you get the missile to say those things as well? Yes, I could. I could. You could. Okay. I just want to make sure that's an option. All right. All right. Here we go. Here, okay. Piss off, you fat fuck. Was that good? Was that good? I, I think you might have maxed your levels there. You might need to do it again. Fuck. Okay. All right. Let me, uh, let me, let me, uh, let me back up from the mic a little bit. All right, let's let's try let's try that one more time. <clears throat> we have to make sure we give uh, Hugh Jars his money's worth here. Okay, here we go. Piss off, you fat fuck. Much Was better. that better? Much, better? much better. Okay, I'm I'm happy about that. All right, perfect, perfect. All right, so there there we go. That was that was a lot of pressure, man, but I did it for you. I did it for you. And uh, thanks for the stream, both of you. 20 pounds. Thank you so much, Turing Test 2. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And uh, we also have another one from Slicks. Just remember to message all of your wrenches when you get back. We'll be here and ready. Absolutely. Thank you so much for the super chat. So. Okay, one more. One more. Sorry, I've got one more take for you. You want to uh, hear it in the, in the voice of the missile? Uh, yes, please. Oh, wait! Did that not work? You you couldn't hear that. That, that did that did not work. That okay. did not work. That did not work. Oh, hang on! I got. I, forgot I just I want gotta... you to know, Hugh Jars just just tipped <laughs> us another eight dollars. So we better okay, start right. giving we'll, him we'll his fucking money's here. worth because I right, ain't tolerating right this fucking silence bullshit. Yeah. Okay. I gotta switch. I'm, I'm gonna switch to this to the stereo mix here. This should work. Okay. Give me one okay. second. Here we go. Here we go. Better. Did that work? Uh, absolutely not. No, it didn't. It didn't? Okay, one, one more time. Here we go. Hang on. Uh, da, da, da. Anything? Or am I still on the blue, blue, blue snowball? Well, now you just sound quiet. Oh. Weird. Uh, my 
microphone. Oh. Wait. Huh? No, that doesn't make any sense. Hang on. Hang on. What What is this doing? Ah, oh, man. Yeah, that's weird. Strami Live, you're failing me here. And huge arse. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. Default. Let's try this. Uh, okay. You can clearly hear me right now. Yes. And if I do this, uh, and I do this, and then I come in here and I do this, uh, oh, input. Here we go. All right. Let's try this. Nope. You still hear me on my stupid microphone. Amazing. Okay. That's cool. Uh, let me try one more thing okay weird uh oh huh yeah it's weird huh weird okay this doesn't work i don't know why that's amazing yeah but now you sound very quiet now, now, I sh now I'm back on the blue snowball. Yeah, I'm trying to switch it to uh, recording the stereo mix, and for some reason, it's it's just going to some other microphone, like my 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 virtual reality headset microphone or something, which is weird. It's really weird. I don't understand why it's uh, doing that. So, Apollo, ah, yeah. cannot get it to. Uh, I cannot get it to. If I send you the file, will, will you be able to play it? Probably not. Mm. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. So here, here, let me let me send you. <laughs> I'm just going to hold the microphone up to the speaker. There. I sent it to you. <laughs> okay, let's let's see. Uh let's see what the what the I mean, I guess I could have done that much. Let me let me try this. Let's see. Piss off, you fat fuck. Piss off. That work or uh I don't know if you could hear that. Yeah, we we heard uh, something. It was very oh. quiet though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see. All right, so download complete. So I downloaded the the audio. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna download this audio on my phone. Make it my ringtone. Check, check. Check. Weird. Did you name it Eleven Labs? That's the name of the website, yeah. Piss off, you fat fuck. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, piss off, you fat fuck. Here it is, one more time. Piss off, you fat fuck. In the voice of the missile. In the voice of the missile. We also had another one of those uh, about the uh, about the telescope. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I love that. What the fuck did you just say about the distance to the sun, you little bitch? I'll have you know that multiple telescopes have been involved in collecting numerous measurements from many perspectives. Perspectives that involve seeing your whiny bitch-ass struggle with the mountain of evidence collected. These telescopes have been trained on targets known to be of significance and have allowed for the collection of parallax data with such precision that it will make you shit yourself. Mark my fucking words. These targets are nothing to the network but just another direction, which were calculated weeks prior to the date of observation. This means your fate was already sealed even before you decided to show your ass for all to see. As we speak, the data is being computed via equations that long predate NASA, which can be found by a simple Google search or a trip to your local library. So you think you can get away with saying that bullshit on the internet? Think again, fucker. If only you could have known what unholy retribution your little clever comment was about to bring down upon you. Maybe you would have held your fucking tongue, but you couldn't. You didn't. And now you're paying the price, you goddamn idiot. The telescope network will shit the measurements all over you, and you will drown in it. You fucked up, shit licker. <laughs> uh, good times. Good times. For the record, you wrote the script on that one. I wrote the script. I wrote the script. That, that was, I wrote the script, and you and you made the missile say all those things. That was that was beautiful. <laughs>
<laughs> oh god but yes that's where uh that's where i believe flat earth is going it's going to go to meme territory only and the missile knows all um oh by, by the way did you uh, uh since we're we're on this let's go ahead and uh talk about one thing uh the uh sukhoi 57 remember that oh yes yes and uh did you know that the missile roasts it oh yes oh i've i've been following that channel yes it's uh it's awesome <laughs> Um, and for those of you who uh, are in the uh, live chat right now, let me ask you guys something. Do you guys know what the Su-57 is? Let's just see if anyone is unfamiliar with the uh, Su-57. Perfection? <laughs> the Su-57 is definitely not perfection. <laughs> oh. Nope. Okay, so Turing Test 2 doesn't know. All right, so it's a uh, it's a Russian fighter jet that's supposed to, quote-unquote, compete with the F-22 Raptor. Um, okay. Russia's floundering attempt at a fifth-gen fighter, right? Yeah, pr pretty much. So uh, let's go ahead and, uh, and take, take a look, shall we? What the hell is that on my radar? Is that? Oh, it's the SU-57. I'm mistaken you for being a bomber since you're so goddamn huge for a stealth fighter. You really think you are able to hide from radar flying around in that city block of an aircraft? You want to know what the 57 means? It's the area code given to it because it's a fucking giant. You're so goddamn big that you make the F-22 Raptor look like a Honda Civic to an F-250 Super Duty <laughs> lift kit. Oh, it's a fifth-gen fighter like in the Tom Cruise movie? Wow, that's really cool. Like, that matters when an AIM-120 is rapidly approaching to your exact position. Pull that one dumbass move from the movie. You may dodge one missile with that, but you can't dodge this 20 mil going straight into your cockpit. Tell your airbase to send more 57s to your position. Oh, wait, that's right. There are only 21 of you in the world, and they can't risk sending more 57s out because you're so goddamn expensive meaning you're all alone. No allies, no friends, and most of all, no bitches. It took you 10 years to get from <laughs> first flight in 2010 to being in the Russian Air Force in 2020, and even then you haven't seen shit. The Raptor did it in eight years, and its introduction was back in 2005. You're already outdated and should move on with your pathetic existence. The only way for you to be truly a stealth fighter is to not exist at all. Go back to your hangar and stay on the ground. So that way I can't see you, and then you can do what you were built for, not being seen. <laughs> That's such a good roast. <laughs> it's so fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, God. Excellent. Just fucking excellent. <laughs> Uh, oh, to answer God. a truth seeker 101 tonight i'll be streaming after as soon as i get off this stream i'm gonna get some dinner and uh, then i'll get the scope set up uh so we'll probably be probably be live by uh i don't know maybe 10 something uh we'll see but uh yeah if the weather's clear i will be streaming saturn tonight perfect 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 and uh hang on, let me bring this up all right perfect and let's go to likes and uh, you also see the the one where uh, Poland gets uh, gets spicy. <laughs> Heat shield. The missile seems to get more honest after a couple drinks. <laughs> oh man, it's it's awesome. And also, there's a there's another guy who's doing uh who's doing F twenty two skits. It's absolutely hilarious. Let me find one here. Let me do this. Go back. There we go. Boom. All right. Let's try this one. Russia, you know we see what you guys are doing, right? I am doing nothing but my special military operation, and there is nothing you can do to stop it. You're shelling, bombing, using rockets, missiles, you name it, on Odessa, mercilessly for some fucking reason. Mm, that's interesting. Where is your air defense? 
obviously not in Odessa. You picked somewhere where our air defense wasn't, so that way you could claim it as a win, when in reality you're just showing that you can't get through our air defense, so you pick somewhere else. And aside from that, you also have Wagner, or should I call them Wanker, troops staging along the Polish border. We are just doing military exercise. And so are we. What do you talk about? You do training along my border, I do training along my border. It's good time. You Polish should be more respectful of the land that Joseph Stalin gave you. Since you're such a big fan of history, have you seen the map of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth? Here, I, I have the map around here somewhere. Please show it to the vodka-flavored dipshit. Oh, could you look at that? Belarus and part of Russia are supposed to be mine. If you cross into Belarus or Russia, it will be seen as an act of war. It's a two-way street. You cross into my territory, is the same. Just remember, Wagner is a private military group and not part of the Russian Federation. Therefore, not Russian. Of this I know. I would discourage them from crossing into Poland, because there will be no survivors. I will make the Battle of Conical Fields look like a fucking tea party. <sighs> Are you crying? <laughs> I am just so unbelievably proud of him. The rest of NATO, you need to listen. That's how you make a threat. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I fucking love it. <laughs> Oh, man. Anyway, anyway. So we're having fun, and it's been fun. But now it's time to uh, end this uh, live stream. And like I said, guys, I am going to be on hiatus for about a year. And like I said, it's because I got some real-life shit that I got to focus on. And it's going to take a while for me to get through all the things I want to get through. Like I said, real-life shit. But when all is said and done, I'm going to be in a much better position than I already am. And I already have a lot of people to thank for where I am right now. So thank you to those people. You know who you are. Um, but I just got to make sure that I keep along this path of success. And I'm not going to waste any more time on flat earth dipshittery when I have this other stuff to do. So I want people to know that I will be back. This is not the last that you're going to see me. And even if Flat Earth leaves a lot to be desired, um, I will still come back to give you all an update. Um, but guys, thank you so much for you know hanging in with me over these last few years, debunking Flat Earth nonsense, and you know pissing them off with facts, reason, evidence, mathematics, especially the math. It was fun filming rocket launches. It was fun, you know, measuring, you know, celestial uh, objects and you know, spacecraft and stuff like that. It, it was fun doing all the things that we did. So I want to say thank you guys. And it was also because of your help and support that I was able to get to where I am right now. You guys also helped me by simply giving me the support that was needed in certain times of my time here on YouTube. And so for that, I appreciate it. I especially would like to thank Astronomy Live for all of his, uh, you know, support and help with all of these projects that I literally just dumped onto his lap and expected him to follow through with Flying Colors, which he did, which, which he did. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, and it lets me know that the act of just dumping shit into your lap randomly is a method that works. And so I will be doing that in the future. Oh, boy. Well, I don't feel as good about that. Yeah, I know. So I always got to bring you back back to reality, man. That's where we are. <laughs> oh, man. So, But, guys, again, thank you so much for all the good times, all the fun times. It's been great. It's been fun. It's been real. And like I said, I'll be back maybe in a year from now to go over everything, give you all an update on how I'm doing. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys then on the other side. Um, in the meantime, take care of yourself, take care of each other. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. Astronomy Live, anything you want to say before we uh, sign off? Uh, not really. I just, uh, I'm just checking the weather forecast. It's actually not as good early in the evening as I would have hoped. I might have to delay the stream till midnight. So hang in there. I'll, I'll post on Twitter if I have to cancel the stream for weather or anything like that. But, uh, thanks again, Red, for having me. Um, I think we've, we've done awesome work together and I, I look forward to doing that again in the future. But for now, I fully support you, you know, focusing on things that actually matter and flat earth is, is frankly not one of them.
Yeah, and quite honestly, like I said, the measuring the distance to the sun, I think that was a great finale. It really was. I mean, we, we've we done everything. We've confirmed the shape of the Earth. We've measured the size of the Earth. We measured the altitude, size, and speed of the International Space Station. We've recorded history in the making when we're looking at rocket launches. I mean, we were there to film fucking Falcon 9. We were there to film an unbroken shot from launch to landing. We were there to see uh, JM Truth being outstanding in this field. <laughs> You know, during during that during that same time, it was great. We we were able to figure out. You and I were actually able to figure out that you can't pan nine miles. I was I was going to say he's outstanding in a field where you cannot pan nine miles. <laughs> and and you know, after all this, we measured the distance to the sun, which I believe was the final nail in the coffin. So. Yeah, we did everything. We did a lot of shit on this channel. We accomplished a lot. We were able to show that some random fuck from Florida can figure this shit out. So what is their excuse? What we've done on this channel is show that there is no excuse. The only reason that a person would be a flat earther, the only reason a person would be a flat earther is through intellectual dishonesty and willful stupidity. So we demonstrated that. We showed that if you actually put effort into the shit, you can figure out a lot of things. And it's not my fault that the things we found out were things that did not agree with the flat earth. Reality doesn't agree with you guys. This channel showed that and you're just going to have to deal with it. And like I said, I will be gone for a year, but the burn's going to follow you for the next 365 days regardless. So guys, thank you so much. We're going to end. And with that, have a good night and a good year. I'll be back. We'll talk more then. Peace out.